This is probably the most colorful shirt I own. <laughs> a lot of people like colors and I don't blame them. I like colors too. I like spending a lot of time creating really fancy terminal interfaces with all you know, different colorful bits all over the place. Something that's not traditionally colored in Python are error tracebacks. If you use something like IPython and you do get some nice little error tracebacks of all sorts of colors, but if you just use normal C Python, or I think most implementations uh, don't bother changing this, then you just get this block of white text that it can sometimes be a little difficult to get your head around. Or for those people that thought that errors were a little difficult to read, all those people that just wanted an injection of color into their errors, Python has finally answered you. And from Python 3.13, error tracebacks are now colorful. It's not just the colors of the errors that have changed though. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through that, obviously, but I'm also gonna be taking you through the other changes that have made errors more verbose, but have also made them a little bit more intelligent. And for those of you that don't like colors or can't use them in your terminals for whatever reason, I'm also gonna be showing you how you can turn them off. Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, then you can become either a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. But I know you're just itching to see these colored tracebacks in action, so let's just get on with it. So we're loaded in the terminal here. I have Python 3.13.0 Alpha 2 Plus installed. This plus just denotes that it's the development version. I got it from Pyenv. I think this might be the latest Git release at the time, or the latest Git like commit at the time that I uh, downloaded it. But yeah, this is Alpha 2. So what I'm about to show you, and I will say this before we say, might change slightly between now and when it's released. If it does, I will say in the release video when it all comes out. But for the most part, all the things that I wanna talk about are at least present. So I'm gonna get your hype up now. Uh, so I'm in uh, just the interpreter because this is really easy to show off because I could just do a zero division error. So I think everyone knows what Python errors normally look like. You know, you have the trace back, most recent call loss, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's notably all in one color. Until now, because now we, this is a very bright purple in this terminal, wow. Um, but we have the, the error actually in red. We have the actual exception in purple, and this is a much lighter purple in VS Code. Uh, and you have the file in purple, the line number and the module in purple. So purple and red are the two main colors. I think I've seen blue before, but I am gonna be showing more complicated um, real world errors using this color scheme in a bit. Um, but on top of it being colorized, we have this arrow here. Now this arrow in stuff like this, I believe has been present since Python 3.11. Though I have noticed in other errors that this sort of you know point at the error system has actually been slightly improved. Um, but yeah, we have that. If I were to do something like, I don't know, string, I don't know, yeah, string.lower, just, you know, an undefined string, it will actually say, that the name string is not defined, and then because it's a standard um, standard in module, it will tell us, did you forget to import string? Um, but it actually knows that it was this bit that caused the problem, and then it has all the different errors and stuff. So if I now go into an actual project, this is my project analytics. I've talked about this a few times on the channel, uh, but this is kind of a development file that I use to just run various situations. And the important thing to know, I'm not gonna explain how this all works, but the important thing to know is that start index equals zero is not valid. There is a validation step that checks to make sure that the start index is at least one. So if it's zero, it will throw an error. And that's all you need to know about this file really. So I'm gonna show you what the error looks like in Python 3.12 first, just so we have a point of reference because they are very different. So if I run this, ignore this warning up here. This is just because I'm using a dev version. But you see, we have this trace back here, starting from, actually, I might pull the terminal down to get rid of all the stuff we don't care about. There we go. Uh, so we have the trace back, most recent call last, and then it does a good job at pointing to the lines that are problematic. So we have, you know, pointing to this and then pointing to shard.fetch report, um, which is the internal thing. And then inside this fetch report, we have a query.validate, which is the validator. And then inside this, uh, there is a check, which then raises invalid request. And then we have invalid request, the start index should be positive. Whether or not zero is positive is a debate for another day. I personally am of the opinion that it's not. It's neither positive nor negative. It is zero, but you know, do what you will with that. But if we were to uh, set my local to my 3.13 one, and I already have analytics and everything installed. If you run this again, We'll see that the error looks much, much different. So I'm gonna pull this up 
quite a way because the area is quite a bit more verbose here. So now you can see that this uh, section, this statement is, is coloured, but it's now pointing at the actual um, parameters themselves. Now it's not smart enough at the moment to be able to figure out which parameter exactly is causing the problem. That might change as Python 3.13 develops. This is a very early alpha version, as I said. But then it comes down here and it actually does the same thing. So on these multi-line ones, it has this slightly awkward syntax of pointing to all of them and then this has, has this eight lines here. I'm not sure this is entirely necessary. Maybe if they do figure out a system to identify exactly which argument is causing the problem that will be omitted. And then you have you know, the same thing here with the self.scopes. And then the error at the bottom is in purple here. If I were to do something like this, this actually spits out an even more complicated error. You'll see it does largely the same thing. So it points at dimensions in the country, or the day in the country, sorry. Points here, query.validate, it then goes you know, further into self.rtype.validate and does all this stuff. Self.dimensions.validate dimensions, and then you know, it comes up with uh, invalid request dimensions, country and day cannot be used together. Error. But you see, again, that purple, I, maybe I was imagining things when I saw blue. I'm sure I saw blue, but maybe it was something in this terminal that I saw. But purple and red are the color schemes that they have used so far. Whether that will change or whether that will be you know, able to be changed, I don't know. One thing you can do, if you really don't like the colors, you can set, I'm just gonna do it like this, uh, set Python colors uh, equals zero before launching the Python interpreter. And what that'll do, if I do one divided by zero now, is it will disable all the colors. So it will keep all the, the extra pointing stuff, but it will disable all the colors. And um, yeah, just keep in mind that it is the American spelling of colors, not the British spelling of colors, like I did the first time I tried to do that. On top of the Python colors, NVAR, there is also the no color and force color variables, which um, this makes it sound like they were already present. So maybe they were already a thing in Python, I just didn't know about them before. But you can use this to force colorization or force no colorization. Or you could just use Python colors equals one or zero to do it. I think if Python colors equals one, it will only colorize them if the terminal supports it. Whereas if you use force color, it will try and do it regardless. Don't quote me on that, but that's my understanding of it at the very least. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. If you have any questions about anything you've seen or any ideas of videos you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I'd also like to thank my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Roshman III for being so generous. And I'll see you in the next video where we take a look at a rejected idea for Python that was then implemented 15 years afterwards. So I'll see you for that.